I don't think that the industry goes away. I don't think that the industry is going to struggle as a whole. But I think the challenge is when companies like Titan go under and give customers and the industry a bad name. I think that's the biggest challenge that we face is number one, customers, you know, orphan customers that have no one to go to. That that's sign- that, that's a real problem. Yeah. That's a real issue in the industry. And then secondly, just the black eye that, that it gives the industry in general. But they were just one of 16 larger uh, residential installers that have gone out of business just in 2023 and 2024. What I would be concerned with Warren the most is companies that are going out there and in desperation trying to get customers to sign by, you know, whatever, whatever way they can, even if it's not good for the customer. Welcome to In The Loop with Larry. This is our July 2024 edition, and we're going to talk about some interesting, upsetting news in the industry, really. And that's just been the uh, really large failure rate of some residential uh, installers across the country, most recently Titan Solar. Um, Larry, I know in this article, and we've got a link to it here if, you, if you'd if you like to, and we'll put it in the description below as well, read the article. But in Time Magazine, they came out and they talked about Titan so- Solar, was looking for a buyer, couldn't find one, ended up shutting its doors in June. But they were just one of 16 larger uh, residential installers that have gone out of business just in 2023 and 2024. And so, first of all, what should, if somebody's a customer, of Titan Solar or any of these other 15 or so large, any residential uh, solar installer that went out of business, what should they do? Yeah, well, first of all, Warren, I mean, that that really stinks because a lot of the value of a solar installation is in the long-term relationship with the installer. Whether it's a workmanship warranty, even if you don't have a workmanship warranty, you just have access to the people that build it. They have the drawings. They know how it was set up. They have the communications with the utility, whatever. They have that history and they can help you out quickly. Um, So that's, it's really challenging. I mean, obviously what their customers need to do is reach out to a reputable company that has an O&M department and and get help, um, you know, if if they have an issue with their system. The good news is hopefully a lot of their systems were installed properly and those customers hopefully don't have many issues throughout the life of the system. And what happens to their, not only equipment warranties, but what happens to their warranties across the board? Yeah, so any warranties from the company itself, like through Titan Solar, a uh, workmanship warranty, a production guarantee, whatever they might have, is unfortunately is gone. Yeah. Um, now, any equipment warranties with the solar panel manufacturer, inverter manufacturer, racking manufacturer, those should still be intact. The challenge is it's, you typically, it's typically the best to work through another installer or a, a O&M company, operations and maintenance company to, to access those warranties. So you, I would suggest they reach out to the manufacturer directly if there's an issue, but they may have to work through an, an installer or an, or an O&M company. Now, the other possibility is some of these companies may have an insurance type uh, backup from another company. Um, I don't know if Titan has anything like that. Yeah. And I would add that if you know your company, your installer is going out of business or gone out of business, but you can still reach them, uh, it would probably be wise to try and get, if you don't already have uh, all the documentation that you can on your system, uh, warranty information, uh, electrical diagrams, any information you can get from them before they shut their doors uh, would be very helpful and good to have on hand. That's that's an excellent point, Warren. I mean, if if a com- if a customer comes to us, if they have their electrical drawings, that's huge. Otherwise, yeah. we have to go out there. We're flying blind, and we have to spend a lot of time figuring out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So, what does this mean for the industry as a whole? This just massive amount, or just a, a significant amount of installers going out of business. Yeah. So a lot a lot of this is from the varied um, incentives. So incentives come and go. Yeah. And that, and that makes it challenging. It makes it challenging for installers. Incentives yep. can be really high and then really drop off. So I, th- I think that's part of what, what we see. Uh, what does it mean for the industry? There's still plenty of good installers out there, Warren. There's plenty of installers that are doing it the right way. 
I don't think that the industry goes away. I don't think that the industry is going to struggle as a whole. But I think the challenge is when companies like Titan go under and give customers and the industry a bad name. I think that's the biggest challenge that we face is, number one, customers, you know, orphan customers that have no one to go to. That, that's, sign- that, that's a real problem. Yeah. That's a real issue in the industry. And then secondly, just the black eye that, that it gives the industry in general. Yeah. And so obviously incentives come and they go and they have been coming and going for the last 12, 15 years, however long that it's really been heavily, solar has been heavily incentivized, but there's been more to it that's really impacted the solar, the residential market over the last couple, couple of years. What do you think that is? I would point to a number of things. One is the grow at all cost um, perspective. So yeah. there have been some large companies, you know, Solar City back in the day. I mean, you, you could argue that they got bailed out by Tesla. I think that's that's a fair argument. Sure. Um, you know, they companies like that they that grew at all costs. We're going to spend whatever we need to to gain market share, and then you know, not not be profitable uh, for the long term. I think the other big thing that I see in the industry, Warren, is companies that are not vertically integrated. Yeah. Um, and, and Titan is an example of this. And I think it was one of their issues without knowing, you know, the full story. I think it might've been one of their problems is that they outsourced their sales. So they were only installing and that on the surface, that might seem like it works, but there's, there's two issues with that. One is that there are sales companies out there that, that rip people off that yeah. lie and do whatever they need to do to get the sale and rip people off. Um, not every sales company is like that, but there are large sales companies out there that that are like that, unfortunately, because they can they can make big money selling solar, uh, and you know the customer doesn't find out till five years later that there's an issue. Um, but then, you know, secondly, I would also say the challenge with that setup is that in the solar industry, you need a really tight communications loop between your operations team and your sales team. Yeah, and and we've wrestled with that over the years, Warren. I mean, we've we've had a lot of these conversations because sales wants to sell. And operations wants to build properly. And that brings a really, really good tension where sales brings the customer's perspective and operations brings, you know, the bottom, the bottom line. Hey, can we actually build this the way the way we're we're selling it? And that that tight communication is huge because things are constantly changing. Incentives are constantly changing, the technology is constantly changing, manufacturers are coming and going. It's it's a fluid industry. And so if you are outsourcing sales or outsourcing installations and there's a problem, who's going to be the one that takes care of that issue? Yep. Just growing at all costs, not being vertically integrated. And when we talk about growing at all costs, sometimes we see with our competition, they offer warranties so far out into the future, workmanship warranties that are just in reality, almost impossible to price in today, the 30 year workmanship warranties. And we almost get the sense, don't we, Larry, that they that they're in it uh, for the short term, uh, not the long term. And just to be wary if you're seeing uh, warranties that are so grandiose that they're unrealistic to price in today's dollars. Yeah, then, ab- absolutely. Yeah, and, but then in addition to growing, not being vertically integrated, growing at all costs, then the interest rates uh, have had a a significant impact on the residential market. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw an increase in electric rates, yeah. which drove up the demand for residential solar like crazy. I mean, it makes sense. And then that was followed by an interest rate increase. And because so many projects are being loaned, uh, are being purchased through through loans and leases and that type of thing, when the cost of money went up, it really made it hard for projects to pencil. Yeah. So we saw market saturation, and now we're seeing a little bit of consolidation as a result, too. Yeah, and I think I, I, I think it's it's the right progression. You know, the, the market's not big enough to handle on anyone. What I would be concerned with, Warren, the most is companies that are going out there and in desperation trying to get customers to sign by, you know, whatever, whatever way they can, even if it's not good for the customer. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about really what makes us different from those or what customers should do to find a reputable company in these situations. 
Yep. And I'll just highlight again, Warren, there's plenty of reputable companies out there. We're one of many all over the US. Yep. So it's not like every company is like, uh, like these companies that are, that are having challenges. But what I would say, obviously, th the first thing is just vertical integration. Look for a company that's going to, they're going to sell it. They're going to design it. They're going to build it. They're going to maintain it. That is so huge. You're, you're working with the same company the whole way through the process. Right. Um, and then secondly, you know, a company that's that's local that you can actually drive into their to their location and you can meet their people um, and, and you can talk to their people. You can actually drive to their office if you have a problem. Um, you know, we're seeing we just just the other day, I saw a company from Florida that's now selling in Ohio, doing door to door sales in Ohio. And I don't even know if they have a brick and mortar location. You know, they, they could go just as fast as, as they came. Um, and then companies that have warranties, yes, but companies that are also profitable. And it's hard to know that from just from um, observing a company because most companies are private and so they're not sharing their financials. But things to watch out for is things like, you know, are, are they, you know, do they have the tools that they need? Do they have the buildings that they need? Are they able to get product uh, or are they depending on you for a large down payment before they're going to do any work on, on your on your system? Are they coming back later and asking for ca for more cash before they before they actually do work? That That's a sign of companies that are that are really struggling. Um, so those are some of the things to watch out for, Warren. Yeah. And I think that there's when you look at that, there's really two different categories of companies. There's these large national companies, which are, in fact, public and you can go and find their financials uh, online. And the overwhelming majority of them are not profitable. They're, they're surviving on investor funding uh, or you can find a local installer local to your area that's probably locally owned and operated small family business. Uh, and those are the, the folks that it's harder to get financial information from, but actually will probably have boots on the ground and be more incentivized to be around for the long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one other thing that I would add to that, Warren, is, is customer reviews. Yep. So there's a few companies, large companies right now that I've been watching that are growing and look great. But if you look at their customer reviews, I can almost predict that in two or three years from now, they're, they're going to be in the same place that a lot of a lot of these other companies are because customers just don't put up with that stuff over the long term. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And so when it comes to getting information from their customers, it's a great source to get an idea of what the experience would be like working with that company. Check out their Google reviews, look at their Facebook reviews, but also ask them for contact information from some of the customers that are looking for that do similar work in the same area that you do and talk to some of their customers and find out about what their experience was like working with that company. Super. Well, that's very helpful, Larry. Thank you very much. Hopefully we, we see this slow down or come to an end. Uh, the uh, closing of, of residential solar installers. Uh, but if you are looking for, if you have a system, and you uh, what that is, has been installed by an installer that is no longer in business and you'd like it to be uh, looked at or monitored by us, reach out to us. We'd be glad to help you with that. Uh, hopefully that's not the case. Um, but if that is the case, hopefully you found this valuable and uh, you know what to do in terms of making sure you have the information on your system um, and, and finding somebody to help support you in the future. And also if you're looking for a system, you know what to look for in a good reputable solar company. So Larry, that's very helpful. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Warren.